Seems like punchy is probably the most wanted description for people mixes these days. It's a little bit counterintuitive since a lot of those mixes get squashed to conquer the loudness war. In terms of punchiness, it all depends on dynamic range, but you usually measure it at the end of your session. In today's video, I'm gonna focus on some key things to make your mixes punchier and more exciting during the process. All of the punch sits in the transients area. Transients are obviously those bursts of energy at the start of each sound. Most present on drums, plucky instruments and stabby basses. I feel like many of us overlook them and then wonder why our mixes starts to feel like a wall of sound. Chances are your sounds or stems you work with don't have enough transient material. Instead of reaching out for compressor, transient designer, try to replace them manually. Take a listen to the snare sound. I really like the tone of it, but it lacks the initial impact. In a scenario like this one, the best practice is to layer another snare. You need to be aware that when it comes to layering similar sounds, you can quickly stumble upon phase issues. Just like in my case, the sound gets actually weaker. Just to not dive deeper into audio editing, let's place Fuser on my original snare sound, select my layered snare as sighting source, and then use the face fix button. Now, I showed you one of the fastest way here, but you can get really geeky and precise by cutting audio and simply replacing the transient material. But hey, it don't always need to be that bad. You can easily increase the punchiness by using transient designers with a simple attack and sustained controls. Finally, we have compression, which I guess is the most classical approach to increasing or decreasing the punch. Just a quick reminder, if you're not a subscriber, we have a ton of videos focused on compression tricks as well as other aspects of mixing and mastering. Click the subscribe button and watch them after because as for right now, I can only give you the basics. Attack knob determines how punchy things will be after compression. To give you a better idea, I switch to delta mode. Now listen to what happens once I make attack faster and slower. Now let's talk things you may usually don't incorporate with punch, but they make a difference. Listen and judge for yourself, which version sounds punchier to you? Those are the same tracks with the same processing, but the major difference is in pre-delayed time on reverb plugin. You probably heard the term washed out many times while speaking about reverb. Think we all can agree that washed out means kind of the same as without punch. As the name suggests, pre-delay is responsible for moving your reverb forward in time a bit to save the initial impact of sound. Initial impact? Sounds familiar to transient, right? Another tool that may not ring a bell while speaking of transients is EQ. On paper, EQ may have nothing to do with dynamics, but the truth is that once you're gonna boost the fundamental tones, you can recover the impact of individual sounds. You can find a lot of charts, cheat sheets, and starting points online, but as always, the best approach is to grab an EQ band, switch it to listen mode, and then look for areas where the punch is. No worries if you don't have this much control over every single instrument and drum hit. Nothing holds you back from using transient shapers on groups, stems, or even on a whole mix, but it can give you mid results. There are some specific tools that will help you to recover dynamics in a more precise way, and let's start with something from our lineup. Punch Module in Animate is not just a fancy name. It will help you to restore dynamics and add transients for any material. As for the quick guide, focus the frequency slider on the area where your mix or track is lacking punch. Then increase the amount and as a double check, press listen button. You can adjust attack, release and sensitivity, but the real fun starts once you're gonna use threshold. Here you can get really precise which part of the sound you want to increase. A little bit more on a pricey side, we have tools like Spiff or Split EQ. 
Both give you an option to increase or decrease transients. First one is kind of a automatic detection, while second one is a tonal and transient shaping EQ. They pay for themselves on a long run, but considering what I've talked before, it's just a band-aid solution. At the beginning of this video, I talked about punchy masters and conquering loudness war in general. You usually hear about clippers and limiters shaving off peaks to make your mixes louder. I also talked about it in our previous videos. While it became a standard nowadays, you may want to increase the punch while you're entering the limiting stage. Well, lucky you since our limiter plugin has a slider just to do that while still maintaining loudness target you're aiming for. Getting your master to be punchy even while using punch slider may seem like a tricky thing to do, but not after watching this video.